one, and he has the ball taken absolutely away from him. And big number 77. Coach in the back city, everyone attacking, turning into a ball game blitz. And the quarterback back in the any outside, turning into a ball game blitz. Ball game blitz. There's a pass, it's caught by Dogs over the blitz. middle, he's going to go all the way. A ball Touchdown. game blitz. A ball game blitz. Yes, yes, yes. All right, I'm here with Joe Gaddis, head football coach for Peabody, and uh, coach, get the playoffs. We've got you got to win, figure out how to win and keep it matching. That's exactly right. Uh, one week at a time. Uh, this game is the biggest game of the season by virtue of the fact that it's winner take all, sudden death. I love this kind of game and uh, looking forward to it. Uh, Early in the week, we heard reports that uh, maybe some of the kids from Humboldt or one of the kids from Humboldt wasn't going to get to play the McLilly kid. Any, any truth to that? You uh, know, he's uh, not dressed out tonight and he won't play. Um, talking to Coach Bland earlier in the season, he told me way back before this was even remotely possible that they had two or three kids faster than McLilly. The fact is, McLilly was not even going to be their running back at the start of the season. The kid that's going to start tonight, number 23, was the running back, and McLilly was going to be a slot. But they changed that up before the season started, so they're going to go tonight with the guy who was originally their starting running back, who's a good football player. Right. So, uh, you know, I don't expect them to miss a beat. Right. Humboldt's loaded, full of talent. Uh, our player's healthy. We're pretty healthy, yes. Good. Uh, somebody said JT Haynes may come back tonight. It, He'll dress. Uh, okay. he, I don't know that he's quite ready to play, but okay. uh, I think he thinks he is. But um, <laughs> That's a big part but, of it. But he's very much uh, better than he was. For sure. Great. Coach, good luck. Let's beat Humboldt. Thank you. All right. anthem directed by Peabody High School Band of Gold directed by Mr. Stephen Westbrook.
right now, one in three drivers is cruising around in a state of skepticism about just how much value their car insurance companies deliver. If you're one of them, State Farm agent Amy Greer in Trenton can help you get to a better state because she'll talk with you, listen to you, and help put together a policy that has you written all over it from cost to coverage, all backed by 24-7 customer support. Feeling less skeptical? Then call State Farm agent Amy Greer in Trenton and officially get to a better state with State Farm. We welcome you to Walter Kilzer Stadium tonight for the Ball Game Blitz High School Television Football Show. We've got a great contest tonight, first round of the playoffs between the Golden Tide of Peabody High School here in Trenton, Tennessee, and the Vikings from Humboldt. This was a great game three weeks ago, four weeks ago now, and uh, representing the Golden Tide, number 71, Noah Allen, number two, Tyler Gadlin, number 10, Nigel Miller, Number 67, Hayden Whitby, and the lone representative for Humboldt is number five, Nick McLilly, who is dressed in street clothes and not going to play tonight, has cracked ribs. So let's go to the huddle on the field. Best game in the state tonight. Everybody's told me that. Well, we expect to do it. We have to do a couple of things. Push off the ground. Don't call him across the line of scrimmage. Be the man in the world. Don't ask you to like the other team. You do that. You're going to do the talking for this team. You're doing the talking for the visiting team. You're going to call this coin in the air. There's tails. Got the two stripes on it. There's heads. I'm going to flip, you're going to call it. I'm going to flip it. If I drop it, we'll flip it again. What is it? He called heads. Heads it is. You won the toss. You want to receive the ball. You want to kick away from the scoreboard? Or you line up on me right here. You line up on them over there. Line up right there. Up on one foul. Captain, we'll receive. Shake hands. Have a great ball game, guys. Good luck, gentlemen. Humboldt will be receiving tonight, and Peabody will get ready to kick off. Golden Tide are gathered at the end of the field, and so are the Humboldt Vikings at the other end. We've got a good crowd on hand tonight. We look forward to a great ball game. Paul, I think we're going to see the key for Peabody displayed first on the field, and that's going to be defense. We know the offense has been strong all year. The defense has been up and down. Played a really good defensive game last time we played Humboldt. Tonight's all going to be about the defense. If they can hold a uh, talented and athletic Humboldt running backs, quarterback, we have a great chance of winning this one. And here come the District 14A champions, the Golden Tide of Peabody. Record of 7-3 this year. Humboldt had a record of six and four, and this should be an outstanding ball game. Big news coming into tonight's ball game is that Nick McLilly, a star running back for the Humboldt Vikings, already gained uh, 2,000 yards during the regular season, evidently sustained an injury last week at Union City and is not going to be playing tonight. Uh, but Coach Bland has reverted back to his original plan at the beginning of the year, and that was to make number 23, Chris Williams, the feature back. Uh, McLilly uh, got into the running back position after uh, he, Williams, was um, not able to play early in the year. But it's kind of the old Ty Cobb story. Uh, he got in and never got out, but uh, Humboldt's got a lot of confidence with Chris Williams running the football tonight. Well, McLilly was a, a rare, I think, talent. Uh, for Humboldt, a young man who extremely quick, a powerful runner. You don't get that combination very often in high school sports, football. But uh, we're going to see how uh, last uh, time, what, a couple of weeks ago, the defensive line for Peabody just really showed up in a big way. You could tell that the crowd, everyone was into it. And that's the kind of atmosphere that we need to beat uh, a good Humboldt team tonight. Drew Sanders will be handling the kicking duties tonight for the Golden Tide and back receiving the kick for the Vikings, I think, is number four, uh, Octavius Ferguson. 
And number 23, uh, Chris Williams, I believe. Drew is set up to do kind of a, I think, a long high or a sideline pooch kick. Let's see what he does. And that's exactly what he does is he kicks it near the near side. And the ball's going to be handled there by number seven for the Vikings. And he's got plenty of running room out here on the wide side of the field. And Drew, Sam Drew Sanders comes up and puts a tattoo on him. And well, so Drew not only can kick, he can make a tackle. He saved his a sure touchdown that time. Great job by him. Our middle uh, cover team just got clogged up in the middle. Nobody, they didn't uh, keep their contain to the outside. You got to come down in those lanes. You hear coaches talk about it all the time. But here we go. See what defense shows up tonight for Peabody. Getting the start tonight at nose guard is number 72, uh, Parker Reeves. Notice that's one uh, change. Humboldt's in the eye formation with a slot back to the left. Ball is handed off to number 23, Williams. And he is uh, going to be slippery to catch all night long. That's Chris Williams uh, running back free safety for the Vikings. And he's going to have a first down on the first play of the game. Well, that defensive line is going to have to do a better job of clocking up the middle, letting the linebackers do the tackling tonight. If you let number 23 uh, get past the line of scrimmage, you're in trouble, and we saw it right there. High formation, tied in to the right side, slot to the left and wide out to the left. Octavius Ferguson running the football, and he's going to be brought down at about the 31-yard line. Tackle by number 16, Ty Fields, and number 10, Najawan Miller. Well, we see the, the left side of Peabody's defense just kind of collapsed there. Had no trouble for Humboldt getting the end and uh, made a big game there. Big first down early in this first quarter. Two plays and two first downs for the Vikings. Game has just been started here. 11 minutes to go in the first quarter. Humboldt's run two plays, two first downs. Tied into the right, slot out to the left, and wide receiver out to the left. And the ball is thrown out there and caught by, no, it's not caught by Ferguson. Ball was incomplete. We saw last time we played them that passing is not uh, the strongest suit for this team. Although they can pass, had some passes across the middle. Uh, I think one went for a score, at least one went for a score. But it's going to be the running game. Kind of an offset eye formation. Tied in to the right, wide out to the right and left. Toss sweep back to Williams, running out wide. And he's going to be hit right there. Number 86, Ryan White makes the tackle, but making the initial stop is number one, Logan Marsh. Well, that's what we're going to have to do, string that play out, give some time for some other defensive players to come up and make a game tackle. Bubba Bailey's coming into the ball game for the Golden Tide, substituting for Noah Allen, number 71. Bubba got hurt the uh, last time we played over at Humboldt. We're glad to see him back. Two wideouts to the far side of the field. And the ball is, ball is thrown out to number 41, a young man that we told you about several weeks ago. That's Keenan James, the tight end lined up here on the right side. And a good throw and catch, and Kenan James is going to have the ball down to the five-yard line, tackled on the play by uh, number 10, Nigel Miller. Not, not terrible coverage there. It was fairly uh, close, uh, tight, but just a great pass. Touch pass, uh, good catch. Not much you can do about that. Peabody's been issued a sideline warning. Coach Gaddis promptly told him to get his mind on the game and leave him alone. Humboldt's going to call timeout here with 9.55 to play in the first period. They've got the ball down on Peabody's five-yard line. We'll take a break with them. You're watching Golden Tide Football here on TV 22, Trenton's local cable channel. Hello, this is Ed Norman, broker with LA Realty of Trenton. I want to thank all of you for making LA number one in our community. We aim to take good care of our customers to the best of our ability. 
We know that's how a successful real estate firm operates in a small town. Please remember us when you need help or just advice about your real estate. Thanks again. First and goal for Humboldt as they have the ball on Peabody's five yard line. I formation, slot man, slot back to the left, tight end to the right, wide out to the far side of the field. Williams is the deep back for Humboldt, hand the ball off to him. And he's gonna be stopped for a gain of about two yards and it'll bring up second down and goal for, the go for Humboldt. Tackle there, uh, I think by number 86, Ryan White. Good job of that defensive line, Peabody. They, uh, of course, at this point, no one's uh, inexperienced at this time of year. Uh, they know what Humboldt's going to do. It's not a matter of, of trying to figure things out. It's just a matter of execution. It's a matter of determination, aggression. And Humboldt's going to call another timeout as they're having a hard time getting the play called. And we'll take timeout with them. You're watching Golden Tide Football. Here from Walter Kilzer Stadium on the campus of Peabody High School on the JEA channel E plus six out of Jackson and TV 22 Trenton's local cable channel. At Raspberry Tire, we can help you with brakes, transmission flushes, interstate battery replacement, all types of suspension repairs and alignments. We carry several major oil brands and tire brands, including Firestone and Bridgestone. Our service center can balance both passenger car tires and semi-truck tires and fill your tires with nitrogen. With 30 years of towing experience, we can haul small, compact cars to semi-trucks and we are the only record service in Gibson County with heavy-duty towing and recovery services. Come visit us at 2216 Highway 45 Bypass, Trenton. Second and goal for the Humboldt Vikings as they've had to call another timeout. They've already used two of their timeouts. Ball's handed off to back into backfield to number 42 and he's gonna take it in for a touchdown. That was Cornelius Watson right up the middle and Humboldt takes the early lead here with 9.09 to play in the first quarter. Well, a couple of weeks ago, it was a matter of trading punches early on. We really thought it was gonna be a very high scoring affair. Turned out the defensive sh began to show up and a uh, 21-14 win from Peabody, but we may see that tonight. We may see several scores. Daniel Blankenship on for the extra point. It's up and it's good. And so Humboldt takes an early lead, seven to nothing here with 9.09 to play in the first period. They took the ball, went right down the field and scored. We'll take time out and come back for the kickoff as Peabody gets ready to go on offense. You're watching the first round of playoffs here uh, from Walter Kilzer Stadium in Trenton, Tennessee on the campus of Peabody High School. We'll be right back after this short break. Whitby Family Clinic offers the very best in primary care, specializing in pediatrics, women's health and weight loss, workman's comp, Medicare, and geriatrics. Come experience the affectionate and caring medical service at its best in a warm, home-like, cozy environment with highly trained nurse practitioners, nurses, and support staff. It has been our pleasure to serve patients in the Trenton area for the past 20 years. At Whitby Family Clinic, we know it is important that you have a medical provider you can talk to and trust. We are devoted to quality care for patients of all ages. Whitby Family Clinic, caring for a living. Blankenship set to kick off for Humboldt. And as he does that, Taylor, tell us about that drive for Humboldt when they scored. It was a seven play drive, uh, four, four runs and two, no, five runs, two, two passes, and three yard touchdown run by Humboldt to take the early lead. All right, Taylor. Humboldt has taken the, the kickoff, or has kicked off, and Peabody 
He's taking the ball. They'll have it first and 10 at the 33-yard line as they take their first drive on uh, the offensive side of the football. We really can't let Humboldt get too far ahead. We're going to have to trade score for score with them here. Peabody's offense has been effective all year. You would expect it to be effective in this game. Number three, Braxton Bogus on the carry. He's going to have a pickup of maybe nine or ten. Going to be awfully close to a first down. Bogus has really grown this year. We've talked about it. First game or two, uh, it was uh, new to him. You know he didn't have many miles under his belt, but he's really come in his own, feels confident out there, running the ball, throwing the ball. He's done a really good job this year. And so Peabody runs one play and has their first uh, first down of the night. Our, one of our sponsors tonight is State Farm and uh, Amy Greer down on South College. And uh, we appreciate her sponsoring, being one of our sponsors tonight. Well, they guessed right there on the stunt, caught Tavari in the line, not able to get that step. He only needs one step, one little crease in that line, and he will make his own yardage. Looks like his feet kind of flew out from under him that time as he got ready to make a cut, and that's going to be a loss of about two on the play. We'll bring up second down in 12. Well, last week a little sloppy, the conditions with some rain tonight, perfect conditions. Peabody's in the spread formation. Little screen thrown out here to number eight, Malik Dokes. Little bubble screen, and he turns the ball up, and it's going to be close to another first down for the Golden Tide. Really like how Malik jumped up and took that ball out of the air with authority, and he has that kind of talent. Uh, one of the, one of the few young men know how good they can be, and I think uh, Malik has just scratched the surface about how good he can be. And that's another State Farm touch, uh, excuse me, a State Farm first down. Well, the referee called it, called a first down, and now they've gone back and marked it and said third and short. It's hard to understand with it that close. The ball marker is virtually on the first down marker. Why they would not, why they would not measure it. Side judge comes in and waves the play dead. And the referee, I think, he says they're going to take official timeout and make a measurement here, which I think is probably the, the correct call. The, the head referee had already signaled first down once, and then I believe the Humboldt sideline probably talked him out of it. Well, Paul, you correct me, but the man with the white hat on is the boss out there. And what he says goes. Well, evidently it does most nights, but it's not going to be tonight. They stretch the chains, and let's see what they come up with. They are going to be about six inches short. But that, that changes the play call, perhaps, and that gives you a you know, chance to decide what you're going to do. Uh, I'm glad they got it right. That's the main thing. That's the main thing, make it right, and uh, probably should have uh, measured it initially. But um, try, the referee's trying to speed the game along, and we appreciate that. Uh, but we've got to get these calls right here. It's an awfully important ball game here tonight. First round of the playoffs. Third and short for the Golden Tide. Barnett on the carry. He's going to have enough for a first down. And they're not going to catch him. And they call a flag right here behind him. They're going to call holding out here on the sideline. Going to call holding right here before us against the Golden Tide. Boy, you hate to see that. But... Oftentimes it happens. Nobody on the black and gold side believes it's true, but they're going to call this one back. Coach Gaddis gets an explanation down there. You know what, fellas? He did it once. He can do it again. That, that's all Tavarian. He didn't need that hold if it was, in fact, a hold. Left side, right side, up the middle. You just give him a step, and he'll take it to the house. Two of the referees had thrown their penalty flag, and it makes you feel maybe a little bit better, like they actually saw a hold if two of them throw it. Uh, but that's going to make it uh, third down and about uh, three, or excuse me, two, 
uh, to make a first down. Peabody calls a timeout here with 7.18 to play on third and two as we're trying to get the right play called. We'll be back as we take a break as you're watching Golden Tide football on JEA plus six out of Jackson and TV 22, Trenton's local cable channel. Right now, one in three drivers is cruising around in a state of skepticism about just how much value their car insurance company is delivering. If you're one of them, State Farm Agent Amy Greer in Trenton can help you get to a better state because she'll talk with you, listen to you, and help put together a policy that has you written all over it from cost to coverage, all backed by 24-7 customer support. Feeling less skeptical? Then call State Farm Agent Amy Greer in Trenton and officially get to a better state with State Farm. Third and two for the Golden Tide here on their initial drive of the game. Spread formation tied in to the right side. They look back over at Coach Mintz to get the play. He signals it in. Bogus is probably going to be running the football. Nope. All right, so we run, a, we run away from our bench, which is a positive sign. Uh, we've been running always toward our bench and so it's good to see us running away from it from time to time well it, you know a game is one first down to first down uh, you just got to keep the sticks moving as we did there don't get too upset about a, a hold a penalty there just keep moving another state farm touchdown uh, first down for the golden tide brings up first and ten uh, from the 44 yard line of Humboldt Spread formation tied in to the left. Bogus is going to keep it, and they're going to tackle him for about a one-yard loss, it looks like, on the play. Nothing. Tackle by number 56 for Humboldt. Excuse me, Joey. Nothing going there. Austin Gullett made the tackle for uh, the Vikings. Humboldt is a good team. Obviously made the playoffs. Uh, played a really tough game two weeks ago. Is it two weeks ago it was? I guess three weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Time gets away from me. Swing pass out here in the back. And that ball was a lateral. And the referee, I believe, missed it. Didn't that ball he, look absolutely. like it went back? That was at least half a yard. Uh, lateral but maybe more and, and no doubt <laughs> Tavarian he felt footsteps on that play he knew the man was gaining on him and he just uh, didn't want any part of that but I like the idea get yeah we haven't seen that play this year and uh, it's a good idea to get Tavarian loose out in space but uh, just didn't work big play right here third and long third and long for the tide Bogus back to pass he rolls out to the right He's got pressure on him, and he's just going to throw the ball loose, uh, throw the ball wide, out of bounds. Well, what we Peabody saw fans are calling for, I guess, roughing the passer. It was an uncatchable ball, but no doubt, and I'm not sure what you call there, but the Humboldt defensive back with both hands just pushes the Peabody player uh, out of bounds while the ball is going over his head. Uh, but there was no way he was going to catch that. So Peabody's first drive of the game stalls and on to punt for the Golden Tide is number 11, Drew Sanders. Spotlight is number one, Logan Morris. Long snap in is number 71, Noah Allen. And the ball is going to be down at about the 15-yard line. I don't know why we don't see if that ball can bounce any closer. And one more bounce. One more bounce might have got it down to the 10. Nonetheless, Ty Fields downs it right there at the 15 where Humboldt will take over first and 10. Well, if nothing else, guys, they got in the Peabody crowd a little excited with that no call on the far sideline. And it's important for momentum, the energy in the stadium for the – for the crowd to be excited. Here we go. The first drive was a little, a little down from Peabody defense, but we'll see what happens here. Split backfield for the Vikings, tied in to the right, two wideouts. 
Williams is going to be handed the ball, and he's going to have a gain of about four on the play. Well, we see Ty Fields came up as linebacker that time, forced the play inside, waiting for some pursuit. Uh, got some short, short gain, but looked good on defense that time. Tackle by number 67, Hayden Whitby. Second down and six for Humboldt. Peabody needs to force a punt right here on this second drive. We need a turnover. Split backfield, wing right, tidy into the right. And Ferguson's going to be carrying the ball wide, and he's going to be tackled from behind by number 67, Hayden Whitby. Well, Hayden Whitby is a difference maker on this Peabody uh, defense uh, on the team. A senior, about 6'3", 270 or so. That's a lot of account, a lot of ability down the line. And we need to see him have a big night tonight, just kind of take over. Hayden trailed that play uh, as he lined up over here at the left defensive tackle. And he was behind it the whole time and just ran down the line of scrimmage and made a pretty good play for a big defensive lineman. Third and five for the Vikings. Offset eye tied into the right, two wide outs for the Vikings. And we're going to stop them as number one, Logan Morris, comes in to make the tackle. And also there on the play is number nine, Aaron Lowry. And that's going to force a punt. Good discipline there by our defense not to take that fake pitch to stay at home inside. It was so quick, in fact, though, that it, <laughs> it wasn't a matter of taking the, the fake. Really Blanken, important to force this punt. Blankenship will be on to kick for the Vikings and back to receive the punt will be number eight, Malik Dokes. I'm back to receive it, I guess, for the tide. There's the Good kick. Good kick. Booming kick, spiral, turned over. And the ball turned back and made a favorable bounce for Peabody. And Peabody's going to have it first and 10 at about the 44-yard line. Peabody goes back on offense. Well, we we're just a little bit close to that ball when it's rolling around on the ground. Like to see us spread out, get away from it. We, we have to minimize, in fact, eliminate mistakes and turnovers. If we do that, you have to believe that we're going to win this game. Peabody looking to get on the scoreboard here with 3.13 to play in the first quarter as they go on their second offensive possession of the ball game. Two wide outs to this side of the field. Gadlin's uh, to the wide out to the top side. Joining Bogus in the backfield is number 22. Uh, the speechster for the Golden Tide, Tavarian Barnett. Tied in to the right. And Peabody calls timeout as they're not sure about that play. And so both of these teams have used two timeouts here in the first period of this uh, ball game. 3.13 to play here in the first period. We're going to take a break as uh, Peabody calls timeout. You're watching Golden Tide football here on TV 22, Trenton's local cable channel. Hello, this is Ed Norman, broker with LA Realty of Trenton. I want to thank all of you for making LA number one in our community. We aim to take good care of our customers to the best of our ability. We know that's how a successful real estate firm operates in a small town. Please remember us when you need help or just advice about your real estate. Thanks again. Well, the referees uh, appear to be having a meeting there. Hopefully they've got it all worked out. First and 10 for Peabody. Coming out of that timeout. Spread formation. Pass over the middle. Wide open was number 86, Ryan White, but Man. the pass was just a little too low. <laughs> they had that set up beautifully. Just a good job by the linebacker for Humboldt to stick a hand up. That linebacker, Austin Gullett, stuck his hand up and made an awfully good play for the Vikings. Second down and 10 for Peabody. You know, that won't show up on the, any of the statistics, but that, that may be one of the bigger plays in the game. 
Spread formation, tight end to the right. Barnett carries the football. He's on the loose, and he's going to have enough for a first down as he picks up about 14 on the play. Gullet on the tackle for uh, the Vikings, as well as number 43, Denzel Epperson. Excuse me, number 23 on the tackle, uh, Chris Williams. You just love seeing Tavari run the ball. And really, it took a while, the evolution in this season. He, he's not been the primary back most of the year. Really, just toward the end of the year, he's been the primary man. And now the coach is focused on him. Throw out there to Tyler Gadlin. Just hit him in a bad spot, I guess, right in the hands. Beautiful pass. Tyler's going to catch uh, 98 out of 100 of those. And so... Uh, I'm not worried about Tyler a bit. Throw it to him again, he'll make a catch. I guarantee you he won't drop another one tonight. Best hands maybe on the team, maybe on the field. Throw it again to him. 2.32 to play here in the first period. Humboldt's winning seven to nothing. Peabody's on their second offensive possession, second and 10. Tied into the right, spread formation. Barnett's in the backfield. Devarian's on the loose, and he's got the ball down to about the 22-yard line where he's tackled by number 31 for Humboldt. Marquarius, Marquarius Ingram, and so another State Farm touchdown for the gold, uh, first down for the Golden Tide. Paul, looked like maybe a trap there. Uh, just gave Tavarian that crease that he needed. He doesn't need much. He's not very big, but he is incredibly fast. Spread formation, the same formation we've had most of this ball game, tied into the right. Balgus is on the carry. He's got the ball down inside the 10 yard line where that's gonna be another first down for the Golden Tide. And it'll be first and goal. It's a great fake that time to Tavari. And you know that this Humboldt defense all week has been keying on Tavari on the, on the film. And uh, they're nervous about him, watching him. You can use that to your advantage as they did there. First and goal for Peabody from the nine yard line. Barnett on the carry. He's gonna have the ball down to about the five where he's gonna be tackled by Williams, number 23 uh, for Humboldt. And also in on the tackle, I blink is number 75 uh, for the Vikings. It's one of their bigger linemen, if I remember correct, Garrett Oden. Uh, Garrett's 6'4", 260-pound uh, defensive lineman for Humboldt. And you see that Tavarian pushed that pile forward. That's impressive, the strength of that young man. Second and goal for Peabody as they're knocking on the door here at Humboldt, against Humboldt. And Tavarian's going to go in for a touchdown for the Golden Tide. You know, sometimes a small back can just kind of hide behind those linemen and those blockers, and the defensive guys just can't see him until he pops out, and then it's too late. And so Drew Sanders is on for the extra point. As Peabody's one point away from tying this ball game up with 54.8 seconds to go here in the first period of action from Peabody High School. Snap is down and the kick is up and the kick is good. And so we've got a tie ball game, seven to seven, as Peabody and Humboldt are locked up in a pretty good first round matchup here. We'll be back after this short break as you're watching Golden Tide Football on TV 22, Trenton's local cable channel.
right, as we get ready for this kickoff, Taylor, tell us about that score and drive for the Golden Tide. The scoring drive lasted seven plays. I uh, just passed it twice, but it was uh, Trevor and Barnett and uh, Braxton running the ball the rest of the way to the end zone to tie it up. All right, seven to seven. There's the high kickoff from Sanders. Going to be taken at about the 13-yard line, and he's going to be hit right there at the 20 and dropped in his tracks. As they had a number of Golden Tide defenders covering kickoff, number 23, uh, Xavier Ball at number 24, William Harris, both were down there making good plays. Well, they've, they've done what they've done most of the year on kickoff covers, and that's keep those lanes and keep contained. And they boxed him up there right in the center of the field, took him down. Great job. Better field position for the Golden Tide on this second kickoff. Last time Humboldt got the ball out to the 35-yard line, this time they start at their own 20. Five-man front for the Golden Tide, three linebackers. Williams on the carry around the left end, and he's going to be hit uh, by number 19. Uh, that is uh, Jordan J Jordan Johnson. Am I saying that right, guys? I think yep. I'm wrong. Yep, it's Jordan Johnson's right. And also number one, I think, made the initial contact. Uh, Logan Morris coming up from his monster man or free safety position. Well, we got to break that time. Williams broke inside instead of outside. He had all day outside. High formation for Humboldt. Tied in to the left. Two split outs. Ball's handed right up the middle to Williams, and Peabody's ready for him. Maybe has a gain of one or two on the play. Should bring up uh, third down and five. Tackle by number 16, Ty Fields, and number 27, Ray Buchanan. Love the way Ray Buchanan came in that time. He didn't care who he hit. He was just going to hit somebody and helped on that tackle. Well, that's going to bring an end to the first period of action. Just like it was three weeks ago in Humboldt, we're tied seven to seven after one period. We'll come back for the start of the second quarter as you're watching Golden Tide football here on TV 22, Trenton's local cable channel. 